It's great to see everyone here, especially some faces that have been out. Um, we're going to be starting off today in our Big Read book on page 132. Page 132. Oh, yeah, we're going a little off script from the bulletin for the first song. So, 132. <laughs> to grow. 
God, we pray for this community, that we would be a light and shining light in this community, uh, that those around us would want to know your son, Jesus Christ, as Savior, uh, because they see that shining in our lives. God, we just pray that you would just bless us in every way, in Jesus' name. Now we're going to be on page 330. Page 330.
starting to give each other anything. So. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to Hey, Steve, it's your turn. My turn? Yeah. <laughs> that is it, Michael, that likes the chocolate, those sweets. Was it oh, Michael? Ricky. Ricky? Well, I, uh, I battle that. You battle that? If you had that pile of sweets in front of me, I'd have a problem. He's got a I like my sweets. I like chocolate. Mm -hmm. I like I like sweet stuff in my milk. I like to make my milk taste like ice cream. Uh, <laughs> and uh, just a hint, you know those? Is it those skinny? What, is that what they're called in coffee yeah. syrups? They have different flavors. They're not just for coffee. I've discovered when you put a little of that in milk, hello. That's how I get my kids to drink milk. I put French vanilla creamer in their milk and they think it tastes like ice cream. That's how I get them to drink it. That's exactly but right. But they need the fat, so they, I get, try to get them to drink it that way. But then I'm like, I could probably just drink the creamer out of the bottle, but I, but I don't. <laughs> I may have done that. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I have discovered that those cough, and they're very strong, so it takes very little. Yeah. You can put it in your milk, and it's like drinking ice cream. And they've got all kinds of flavors, just amazing flavors. Uh, and and I, I do have a hard time staying away uh, from those sorts of things when I need to. Uh, and, uh, you know... Does anybody force me to eat that piece of chocolate? Does anybody force me to eat another piece of chocolate? Yes, they do, Steve. That makes 
Yes, they do. So, so there, even, uh, let's say, I can literally get a bag, and my favorite are the semi-sweet chocolate chips. I can literally get a bag of those and just eat them until they're gone. And, you know, others, that's too rich. No, it's not. Perfect. And if you take that and you put it in a cup, like a solo cup, and make it half peanuts and just shake it, and you can just drink it. it, it, it oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Uh, these chocolate chocolate chips with peanuts and and do you know if, if you take the peanuts and do the same thing with candy corn it tastes like a payday it tastes exactly like a payday doesn't it it tastes exactly like a payday and, and I, I just I have I have an issue with that I love to have my sweets but there are certain times in my life, and right now I'm trying to make it one of those times, where I walk away from those sweets for at least a period of time in order to shed some pounds. Because if I don't do that periodically, then, well, you know what happens. Uh, but the temptation is there. And the temptation is, is that I do what is not good for me. And those temptations, it, you know... I. <laughs> If, if God would have made the uh, stuff that is really good for you taste the absolute best, what would we all be? We'd all be super healthy, right? Strawberries are good for you. Uh -huh. Strawberries, are good for you. Strawberries are good for you, but not 400 of them. <laughs> I, like, I like to, see, that's my problem. I like to take a strawberry. I think you'll get those little tubs of strawberries. You take a, a strawberry and dip it in Splenda. Okay. Pull it out, and it's got this straw. It's got this Splenda coating around it, and I think I'm eating low carb, <laughs> but I ate 40 of them. So did I eat low carb? <laughs> no, I didn't. I, and, and the temptation is for all. I'll just have you know one more. I'll just have one more. I'll just have one more. Uh, and the problem lies there where the excess is a problem. And and but there are many things that we run into where temptation is there. And the Bible never says that you or I will be able to beat that temptation. It never, ever, ever lays out that you can beat it. I promise you, you sit down a bowl of chocolate chips in front of me and put me a chair in front of it and let me stare at it. I will not beat the temptation. There will come a point in that process that I'm going to do what? <coughs> the chocolate. And if you're a, a, a dieter like myself, once you eat the first one, ah, I blew it. I can go ahead and finish it. <laughs> right? Right? That's the problem. I will not, on my own, be able to walk away from the temptation that is before me. I can't help but think of King David. King David was on a roof. And I don't know. I have my theory about that. I, I kind of feel like this wasn't the first time that he knew what he would be able to see. The Bible doesn't say that. That's my opinion. I just want to make sure you understand that's my opinion. I think he knew what, was, what, what the opportunity was when he went out on the roof. I really feel that way. I don't know that, but I feel that way. But nonetheless, he's seen something, at least the first time, that he didn't expect to see. He's seen something that, that he liked. He's seen something that he wanted, something that he desired. And the problem was not that he's seen it. I'm talking about the first time. He didn't intend to see it. It was something that flashed before him, and he had the opportunity to do what? Look away, walk away, get away from it. If I'm going to defeat that bowl of chocolate in my life, I can't sit there and stare at it. The only way I can is to run away from it, to run past it, to get, get it out of my eyesight, get it out of where I, I can smell chocolate. You walk, hmm. I'm like a dog. I'm like a hound on a rabbit when there's chocolate around. I'm going to find it. And I'll smell it out. And, 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 and if I'm going to beat it, if I'm going to defeat it, if I'm going to get it out of my life, I must run away from it. And, and I think too often, how many times do we blame our temptation on Satan? 
Satan put that before me? No, he didn't. Now, at times I think he can. But when I know there's chocolate in the cabinet and I go open the door, who looked? I'll just look at it. Smell it. Right? <laughs> yeah, are you with me, aren't you? Yes. Sister there, she's got that. She knows. I'm just going to smell that chocolate. That'll be good enough, right? Uh, and, and, you know, whose fault is it that the chocolate is there? <laughs> <laughs> Who usually brings home the chocolate? <laughs> me. I'm, but, but give me some credit. What did I pass up this morning? <laughs> Here's my problem. Every morning I start fresh. I can beat every temptation in the morning. But by nightfall, I'm back where the temptation is speaking to me. My temptation for chocolate happens the worst when everybody else is in bed. What would fix that? Go to bed for naked. Go to bed, that's right, go to bed. Don't sit up and think about the chocolate, right? Go to bed. And if I was sleeping that, then I wake up the next morning, I beat it the night before, it's fresh the next morning, right? We have these temptations, we have these issues in our life. Every one of us has something that draws us that shouldn't be there. Where human nature, our human nature is to sin and to desire sin and to seek out sin. That is, it's against human nature, the sin nature that we have to do the right thing, to follow God, to walk away from the chocolate when I shouldn't be having the chocolate. But my Bible tells me very specifically when I come up against a temptation that God will make a way out. Every time we give in to a temptation and we do not blame ourselves and we begin to blame others and we begin to even blame God, there is a simple truth that we have to learn. It is never, ever, ever God's fault because the Bible says, and very clearly, and we're going to look in the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 10, verse 12, Take heed, lest he fall. I can stand for so long. Do you understand? And everybody has a different tolerance, if you will, for temptation. Others will give in faster than some on certain temptations. It's just the way we're wired. But the Bible says when we think we're standing, when we think we're solid, when we think we have beat it, when we think that we have, uh, have stood up enough to defeat that temptation, we better be careful because it says what? Take heed lest you fall. In verse 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who with not suffering you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Nowhere in this does it promise me that God will give me the strength to resist it. God knows I am weak. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. God did not say, I will give you the power to beat it. He said, run to me because I beat it. Do you understand? I am to run to him when the temptation comes. When, when, the, when, the, when the temptation to do wrong is there, then it's not my ability to stand there and resist it that's going to keep me from it. It's the fact that I turn and run to the one who will stand in the gap for me, who will stand in between me and the temptation, and when I'm wrapped up in his arms, he can place me where he wants me to be. And it's not about his ability. I, I think so many times we say we're going to fight this and God's going to help us. No! God's going to fight it and we're going to let him. Do you see the difference? 
I'm not the front line. I'm not the one that's going to absorb all of the problems. And, 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 and you know, I, uh, Macy's new movie to go to sleep to is uh, The Lion King, the, the new Lion King. And I, I, I've not really seen all of it yet, even though I've been in front of it a few times. Uh, but one of the things that I've noticed, when, when danger is there, when, when, when the, is it Simba? When the little lion, when he's young, and, and all of a sudden there's danger, and he realizes he's got himself into a pickle, what does he do? Well, he's, he runs, but who takes care of it? Mufasa. James Earl Jones, right? I could listen to him talk all day long. James Earl Jones, right? Mufasa. And this big, giant lion runs out there. He starts knocking the hyenas out of the way. And he, he does everything he needs to do. And Simba doesn't fight the battle. He gets out of the way so the, the, the king, the lion, can fight the battle. And, and, and you know what it's like when I fight the battle instead of letting God? It's like a little sheep running up to a big wolf and going, I got this. And you got the big lion in the background going. You understand what I'm talking about? The little sheep needs to get back under the safety of the king and let the king fight the battle for him. My Bible says that he is the lion of Judah. And, uh, you know, when I think about the power and the glamour, if you will, of a, of a lion and, the, and the, the, the beauty that they have and the strength and the, uh, the just, they just, you just respect them. You have to. There, there's, when you see a lion, how many of you have went to the zoo and, and seen the lion and went, wow, it's just a big cat, right? But he demands respect and authority. Because he's the lion. And it's just the way that he is. And when we try to fight the battle, it's just like stepping in front of the lion and trying to fight off the wolf or whatever it is. And, 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 and what happens to us when we fight the battle on our own? We fall, right? What does it say? Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. You know... I seen this goofy video the other day, and it had this gentleman that was probably, he was he had to have been seven foot. And it had to, it, it was supposed to be funny. And it had this like uh, five foot little guy. They both had boxing gloves on. And the little guy was trying to jump up and hit him. Trying to jump up and hit him. And he, he couldn't do anything. And, and then the big guy, all he had to do was hold his glove out and hold the guy back. His arms were long enough, he couldn't even reach him. And after a little while, the big guy just went, don't on top of his head and he fell down. How many of us foolishly go into a battle with something that we will not defeat? I got this this time, God. I got this this time. And we bargain. And we bargained before. And we say, God, just forgive me this time and I won't do it again. I'm going to fight this battle and I'm going to defeat it. And what always happens? When we're trying to fight that battle, when we're trying to do it, when we're trying to resist, when we're trying to stand uh, in the place to, to take the hits and fight this battle, we are going to fall. And, and, and we, we act like, God, I'll get this right someday. I'll get this right someday. And God's saying, listen, listen, you'll never get it right. I've got this. Just run to me and let me Take care of it. And when the temptation is there and God opens that door and the escape has been shown, how many times do we see it and we still say, God, I got this. I can handle this. I don't think there's anything wrong if you want to witness to people at a bar. If you want to walk in and share Christ with them, is that wrong? Should we give that ministry to the recovering alcoholic? No! There's a reason. And, and, and I think so. We got this. I got, I'll go in and show them how God delivered me. That's foolishness. You can show them how God delivered you by <laughs> staying away. Right? And letting God do and let, letting God fight. And, and somebody that hates chocolate, 
Even though they don't really have any understanding, maybe they should help fight the battle against chocolate, right? All right. Step up. Step up, right? Do you, 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 know, you hate chocolate? He does. It's a blessing sometimes. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Even in our weaknesses here on this earth, we all have strengths also. And I believe God puts us in ministry where those strengths are. And we should be, you know, if, if, if within, and Brandy, you'll appreciate that, my wife, the teacher, if you have zero patience for children at all, should you work with children? I would punt them all out the door. Nope, nope, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't work, right? I, I, I understand. You know, there are certain things that we shouldn't do. Because that is not the character that God has given us. And thank God for the people. Thank God we are all different. I once thought about writing a song and I started it and it got too funny and it was kind of silly so I quit. But it was what if, what if everybody in the church house was just like me? And then it had a line in that said, you can get glad in the same pew you got mad in. Isn't that kind of funny? Anyway, it was not going to be one of those nice, wonderful songs. It, it, it was just kind of a humorous thing to me. Uh, but, you know, what if everybody was the same? If everybody had the same temptations, if everybody had the same strength, uh, we wouldn't get anything done. God has made us all different. And I think God will show you and help you to recognize where your weaknesses are. And when those weaknesses show themselves and when they are expressed and the temptation is there, quit trying to strengthen something that's not there and run to the strong one. Run to God. It, it says God has opened the door the, the, to escape the temptation. And, and, and how many of us act like our temptation? You just don't understand. Have you heard that? You just don't really get how much I like chocolate. You just don't understand what it does to me and how it speaks to me and how it draws me, right? And we say, say to somebody, you just don't understand. What does it say? There hath no temptation taken you but such is common to man. I may not have had your specific temptation, but somebody has. You are not more tempted than everybody else on this earth. It's not something that battles you harder than it does other people. A specific temptation might battle you harder than someone uh, that you're talking to or whatever it might be. But you can, I guarantee you, you can find somebody out there that is just as tempted to, to whatever it is as you are. It says that you have not had any temptation, but that is common to man. And then it says, but God is faithful. So it doesn't matter what your temptation is. It doesn't matter who has the same temptation and who doesn't. In the end, all the temptation is to be given to who? To God. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? I couldn't resist. Do you know that's unbiblical? Read it. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? The devil made me do it hogwash. He knows what your weaknesses are. He might design things to put those weaknesses in front of you. But in the end, in the end, God said, there is no temptation out there that he will not deliver you from. He said, but with the temptation also make a way to escape. I think, and, and there was a gentleman at work not that long ago who was talking to me about a temptation and, and something that's taken over their life. And, and, and you know, they, they, they wanted to, they wanted help in having to defeat it. And, 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 and one of the things they wanted to know was how do you get strong enough to beat it? You don't. You never, ever will. And I know I'm repeating myself, but how many times do we, do we over again and again and again and again go up against the same issue, the same temptation, and every time we think what? We're going to get it this time. That's right. This is the time I'm going to walk away proud. Right? And then what happens? What do we tell? What do we tell children? 
when you get up against something that you don't that you can't handle, what do we tell our children to run to? An adult. We say an adult, but most of them say us. You know, come to me, come to me. I'll help you. I'll help you because that's what we want. We want to see. We don't see it, and I think sometimes we think it's a sign of weakness if we try to if we admit that we need help from God with something. I should have been able to beat this. I should have been able to defeat this. And the Bible is clear. No, you wouldn't. Just as children run to those that they trust, and in that movie, just as Simba runs to his dad, Mufasa, do we not realize that the one who said run to him is the one that spoke into existence light itself? The one who rose from the grave and walked out of the tomb before the stone was even rolled away? The one who spoke into existence all things. The one who reached down and breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. He's on our side. But we want to do it on our own. Does that sound silly? But if you've ever been around a child. Who one day wakes up independent. I can do it, right? I can do it all by myself. And then we condition that, that, that thing because when they do it all by themselves, what do we do? Praise Good job! I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying in the light of Christian walk, when we say we've done it all on our own, what are we saying? God didn't do nothing. I did it without Him. My Bible clearly tells me that the most holy and righteous thing that I can come up with, the, the, the most perfect thing that I can, can make or create or be a part of, is no more than filthy rags compared to the righteousness of a holy God. And when it talks about filthy rags, this may not be pleasing to the ear, but it's not talking about the dish towel. It's not even talking about those old cloth diapers that had you know what in them. That's pretty gross, isn't it? That's not even what it's talking about. It's talking about the rags that they used as bandages to wrap around the leprous spots that would soak up the gross stuff. The pus. The, yeah. You understand what I'm talking about? When the Bible says my righteousness is as filthy rags, it's talking about the abomination that is in a cankerous sore. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when I say I can be good enough to defeat this, it's like throwing BBs at an elephant. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. But when I turn my temptation over to the one who created all things, the Bible clearly promises that he will make an escape. He will make a way out. And when I flee and I run to him, he will defeat it for me. Gary, I love using you. <laughs> Gary has blessed me beyond belief in his testimony. Gary, there was a time when if you had a bottle in front of you, what would you do? Drink it. You'd have drank it. So much so that Gary has a different liver than he used to have. But under the power and the direction of a holy God, what happened? The bottle was defeated. Do you understand? It wasn't Gary. He didn't do it. You put that bottle in front of me, he's going to drink it. God is the deliverer. 
Too many times I put myself in front of the chocolate thinking I'm going to be able to stand and I fall. When I see the chocolate, instead of trying to stand, I just need to turn tail. You know, in our society, we're taught you don't run from it, you stand up, right? There are certain situations which I understand that. But when you're coming across your temptation, your sin, the one that gets you, tuck your tail and run. And do not be ashamed. Jump into the arms of the Father, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and let Him defeat it for you. Gary, I believe you would stay to say this morning that if it wasn't for the hand of God and the power of God, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be here. The liver was gone. It wasn't going to work anymore. But under the hand and the power of God, the bottle was defeated. And I'm here to tell you this morning, I guarantee you God can defeat the chocolate. Right? It's wrong of me to eat pounds and pounds of chocolate. Because what am I doing to myself? Now I'm not preaching, I'm meddling, right? <laughs> I know what Baptists do, they eat. They have a dinner, what do they have? Lots of food and lots of dessert, right? Right? He knows, don't you? What's that? God can defeat billions of chocolate. You know what? That is my God. My God can defeat billions of chocolate. He can beat billions of bottles. He can defeat, he can defeat whatever your temptation is. He's got it. He's already beat it. And that's the beauty of it. When he took the sin, the weight of the sin of the world upon his back, and he died on the cross and he rose from the grave, he already beat it. So I'm not running to the one that can beat it. I'm running to the one who did beat it. It's done. I just have to be a part of that. I just have to go to him. And so many times we think we failed. In reality, our failure wasn't that we gave in. The failure was that we didn't run to him. And I want to challenge you this morning. I want to leave you with this. If you have any temptation in your life, for whatever it might be, stop trying to fight it and run to the one who has already beat it. In him will be the freedom from everything that comes at you. I'm going to read it again just so you make sure and understand. It's not my words. It's not Brother Steve's words. It's the word of God. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Stop fighting. Start running. Doesn't sound like a motivational speaker, does it? Motivational speakers will tell you to stop running and start fighting. But why would I fight a battle that's already been won? Just run to the one who defeated it. Stand with me. God, we love you. We thank you so much for being our strength, for being our defense for being the one who stands in the gap. Help us, Lord, to understand when temptation is put before us that all we have to do is run to you. Go through the escape, the door that you open, and, and be looking for it. God, help us to take our focus off of the temptation, but onto the escape, Lord, and that we would follow through and come to you and let you beat it in our lives. God, we know that there are so many things that are plaguing our world and, and, and the things that, that, uh, that Satan has in our world that people have taken a hold of. God, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us, Lord, to just be, uh, to, to be a light that shows people that, that they can turn to you and that you can defeat these things in their life. God, we just pray that you would bless us as a body, as a church, Lord. Help us to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sanctuary.